our guest today. I love it when he comes in studio because have you, you've only been in studio once, right? I don't think you've even you, been in once. I think you, he's done one, video yeah, camera. Done video. Hey, can you move your mic up? I don't know if we told you. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. Perfect. Hey, Justin Hicks, Missouri representative. How you doing, my friend? Doing pretty good. How are you doing, Vic? Your graphic looks good behind you. Love it. <laughs> Isn't that it's good, good? It's a good shot of me. Okay. <laughs> uh, you happen to be the nephew or no, the, the son-in-law right. of Lizzie. Yeah, I just do you happen to be. Do you <laughs> so happen. It's a coincidence. <laughs> do you remember your first meeting that you had with Lizzie and what that was like. Yes, I actually do. Me and her daughter, we actually went to, there's a program down in St. Louis City to help children of un, that are unfortunate with different, with different needs during Christmas time a few years back. And her mom and her family were actually there, but Heather would not tell me because it was our second date and we went to go do that for our second date. And it just so happens that they came over to us at some point and Heather's like, oh, these are my sisters. This is my mom. This is my dad. And I was like, okay, this is our second date. What the heck's going on? We were spying on him the whole time. Are you serious? <laughs> Not, but it was a, Lizzie. It was, here's a, she invited us there first. And so we had a station. And then she said to us, hey, you guys can't come. And we're like, why? And she didn't tell us. And Heather's not a secretive person. Okay, what's up? And then that's when she admitted she had been dating this young man. And so then, of course, my husband is, which Justin already has to put up with my husband. And he's, okay, then we're going to go anyway. She's like, don't tell him we're there. So we just looked from afar the whole time. And then we just sprang himself. And he didn't act the least bit unnerved by us. And so if he was... He it was didn't... definitely all internal. I'll say okay. that. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> sure, I'm sure you had like, the unnerved okay. bias. Yes, yes. We appreciate you jumping into the studio today. And I know that you didn't know that question was coming. But the last time we spoke to you, you were making national news, of course, because you are privileged. And how does it feel to be a black man who's privileged, who, who grew up poor, but is still, <laughs> but you're still privileged. You're still called privilege, buddy. I, I know. I still get confused by it today. I, I don't know. <laughs> Last time I checked, I'm pretty sure I'm not privileged, but just somebody who actually took advantage of what America has to offer and put a best foot forward to do those things. But ever since then, it's still been great. We've been chugging away at a lot of things here in Jeff City. When we're in session, we're out of session now. We actually just had the governor sign a slew of different bills that we passed here in the House and the Senate. Some of the most notable bills that got passed last week were was we did a tax cut for senior citizens, so for Social Security. So they no longer have to pay social, state Social Security tax whenever they're receiving their Social Security benefits. We also allowed counties to opt into a program that they can freeze personal property tax for senior citizens. And this is actually pretty huge because this is a segment of the community that's usually on the fixed income. And we talk in the Republican Party about cutting taxes and where to cut things from all the time. And I think this is one area where there's a really good area to actually cut it at is taking care of some of the most vulnerable groups of people in our society by cutting taxes and giving them tax relief there when they've contribute contributed over their whole life to to the system by itself. Some other things that we've passed was also a bill, which was actually back in June when the governor signed it. And you guys have probably talked about it bef before already, is we've passed where you cannot perform sex change surgeries on minors anymore yep. here in the state of Missouri. And we also protected we also protected women and women's sports as well. And those are huge pieces of legislation, especially as the left keeps pushing this very destructive gender ideology message to to children by itself. I think this is a good start, mm -hmm. what we did in protecting, because I still think there's more to do because you have corporations out there like Target that still go after kids in their messaging, as we've seen over this past, what they would like to call Pride Month or just normal people's month, in my opinion. But uh, yep. yeah, so yep. the, those are some of the pieces of legislation. We've also done things within the budget that have been good as well. But there have been a few things that have been vetoed by the governor in the budget, especially out in my area, which is disappointing. Obviously, there's reasons behind them, but there was a veto of a $5, a $5 million loan to the city of St. Charles for water treatment, which is, mm -hmm. if you know anything about St. Charles County, it's a growing county. It's every single day you turn around, there's a new development, there's more people moving out there. And I think this is one thing that we definitely need to reevaluate and look at and say, hey, how are we ensuring that we're helping citizens 
in the area, especially when it's developing by itself. So those are some of the things that I've been working on in Jeff City. All Is that it? No, there's many. Yeah, there's a list. There's a list. I could sit here for a long time and go down the I list. I can imagine. Yeah. So he signed, I, I cannot even give you a number, it was more than 15 bills last week. And everything. We're still sorting through what exactly he signed and what he vetoed and everything like that as well. We've also done something in the arena of actual uh, child custody here in the state of Missouri, which is unique. Not many states have done this yet. It seems to be a trend that's going forward. It's here in Missouri, there really is, there's not a presumption of that the mother and the father are, have, should have equal parenting rights mm -hmm. under what was prior law by itself. But the governor signed in in the law, what is, it's a presumption that fathers and mothers are both equal in their parenting skills. So whenever there's child custody battles or any of those kind of things like that, there's always a presumption now as of on August 20th when it gets implemented is that fathers and mothers are going to have 50-50 unless you can show otherwise by a certain criteria, which is huge by itself because it's groundbreaking from where we were in society to where we are today. So those are some areas that we've also improved on. We've also improved on making sure that we're protecting people's information here in the state of Missouri as, as we have a system in the judicial system called the CaseNet here in Missouri. And there's so much information out there on it. We've made it now to where certain information when you're filing things that you can't disclose. So just your personal information, really, like your social security number, protecting minors in there, your address. So mm -hmm. people can't go around and find all these bits of information that you would consider personal. But we've done different things like that. But uh, there's been some things that I personally think have been underrated in the news by itself. And just being on this side of the aisle in the Republican Party, in my opinion. You uh, just mentioned like 15 things. <laughs> yeah, you guys are just kicking ass, Justin. We're trying. We're, I mean, we're, you, can we're take trying. A, you can take a breath, my friend. I mean, that's <laughs> insane. Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying. I'm trying to get things done. There's still more things that we want to get done. I what think. should be getting more coverage? I what should be getting more, that uh, more coverage by itself is uh, it's not even a bill that we've that we've done. It's something that's actually more recent in the news here. It's happening in St. Louis City. I don't know if you've heard of all this whole reparations committee that the mayors put together. To yeah, we heard Tashara Jones plans on paying only a certain amount of families. And if you want to, you may know the specific details, a certain amount of money, specific amount of families getting a specific amount of money one time. Yeah, no. So it's it, the whole idea. And was it, that coming out of the money that came from Kronka? No, I no, I don't know. I we, thought I have no clue where the money's coming out of yet. OK, obviously it's Missourians tax dollars. It's coming, it's coming from Missouri and tax dollars. Essentially what they're trying to do is they're trying to set up a system of reparations for the past sins of generations that are either no longer here or things that aren't even going on in America anymore. And this is counterintuitive by itself. It's going into the area. I know we've all seen California and their crazy reparations programs that they have. This is what they're trying to do here in Missouri by itself. And it's not actually getting a lot of attention when it should be. It should be concerning by itself and what they're doing, because what they're doing is they're trying to say that certain individuals based on their color, again, should be able to reap benefits from the system and everything when there's not really any disadvantages that they have because they have the same opportunities as everybody else here in America to do things. And like I said, this is what the left would consider privileged, I guess, in their thing is that individuals start at different points. You grew up life. rich and you went to a private school, Apparently, so you wouldn't understand, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Public school all the way. I had, it was like, what? Because you're a what? conservative, you're no longer black. You're no longer poor. You no longer nope. grew up with a single mom trying to take care of everything. Apparently I live in a mansion. Okay. <laughs> I know, allegedly, the word on the street is, I guess I'm privileged. I live in a mansion. I, <laughs> I drive Ferraris every day. I don't know. <laughs> um, I not, wish. It's, not it's to get dream. too far it's a, off. I know. It's, it's a, a goal. Dream. It's a did goal. Representative, it's a goal. <laughs> did Representative Terry Marlene Terry, who's asked you if you were or told you were privileged, did she ever apologize? No. She's avoided me the rest of the session. No, of had. course she has. And, oh, you know what? We just might have to play that again because it never gets old. We might. <laughs> some point if we could pull i don't think joe yeah. has it we'll have to find that again but yeah. you were talking about reparations most people understand what reparations are yeah. but it is interesting with somebody from your background your experience to call this out in regards to yeah. local media
media is going to be afraid to play it. Mm-hmm. They're afraid. They're afraid they're going to get canceled that groups from the NAACP and other community groups will say that they're not fair and they threaten TV stations to march on their studios. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a, it's definitely one of those things where it's, that's a shame, but, and I think it's not getting a lot of attention just because if you're on this side of the aisle and you say something about it, you say how it's bad, then you're automatically labeled as a racist. Is this is me trying to say, Hey, no, this is not the case. This is a terrible idea because where does the line end? Mm-hmm. There, there is no end in sight. It's always pushing more and saying that we're so hyper focused on race instead of looking at other things, such as maybe how people are growing up, what type of education they have, different things like that. There are actual like factors in determining where you go in life and not just like objective things that do not matter, like your race, for instance, here. And it's a shame. And it's a shame that they really want to use tax money and set up these commissions and waste tax dollars on these things by itself. And it's something that needs to be called out and say it's a bad idea. And we, this coming up session, we would definitely be looking at legislation to stop harmful things like this because we have to take the conversation away from this here and start looking at more criteria that actually matters. Like, I said, you're where you grow up, you know, what skills you have, because really everybody doesn't matter who you are. You're privileged in some sense or another. It doesn't matter what it is. There's something in your life that either you have better than somebody else or anything or something of that sort. And we're so focused on wealth and where you grew up and where you started at. People are born into those things. America was not built on everybody starts on this even playing field by itself. It's saying that you have the same opportunities to go do those things there, but it doesn't say that you should have $100. You should have $100. It's not saying that. That's where the American dream comes in and says you have to work for what you're going to do and what you want to achieve in life by itself. And just handing these people's money by itself, that doesn't really help their situation or whatever situation they're going through because money doesn't really solve the issue by itself. All you're doing is saying that, you know, we see you differently in society. And that's really what it's getting down to. When it comes to that whole situation that you talk about with reparations and Tashar Jones in St. Mm -hmm. Louis City, is there anything anybody can do to try to stop it? It has to be St. Louis City residents. I know that. Yeah, it's going to have to be St. Louis City residents. And there's nothing that you can do in the state legislature either. You know, there's things that we'll look into here in the state legislature. This is, like I said, this is an emerging issue that's going on currently in the city. They haven't moved. They've moved enough to set up the commission. We don't fully know where they are in it. Mm-hmm. Definitely look and see what we can do. Cause you, again, like I said, you're hurting people more than helping people in this situation because now, you know, it, you're telling people again by their race or by whatever past sins of generations ago and stuff that, they are disadvantaged. And that's definitely not the case here in America. Do you feel like you get canceled for that? Oh, definitely. Like, for me, I'll get called to Uncle Tom. I'll get called privileged, all these different things. How does it make you feel, like though? That. No, it, it, to me personally, I can take it. I, I stand true to my beliefs, but this is not how I was raised to. I wasn't raised to soak as a victim in life. I was raised to rise above that. And that's what, and that's what I think other people need to do. You, if you sit there and you soak and you say, "Oh, I'm a victim, I'm a victim, I'm a victim," you're never going to do anything in life. And that's how I was raised: is that you go out there, you put your best foot forward, and you try to achieve you, what you want to achieve. Justin Hicks, he is a Missouri representative. He is Lizzie's son-in-law. He is a massive up-and-coming political figure, not only in the state of Missouri, but the Republican Party as well. I've heard people talk about you as well, who win the state as well. So they know your name. They knew you were coming. And then Marlene Terry helped bring your name even, <laughs> even more national. I think I just saw Joe. He has it. We're just going to remind people what went national. Marlene Terry coming after you. Now, this whole debate, again, was upon DEI, right? Backing. Yes. Yeah, versus- it, was, it was on doing another common sense provision, which was saying that, hey, at the state, we're not going to fund companies and that try to promote one race over another. We're going to based whatever whether we're giving you money or not based on what you do and what services you provided not based on whether you're black white of latin descent any of those things like that all right here's uh, here's a little bit of what happened with marlene taylor going at or Mar- going after or terry excuse me marlene terry representative marlene terry going after the privileged justin hicks what you identify as 
Identify? Ethnic, ethnicity. I identify as an American. Not uh, an African American? Yeah. Uh, or are you African American? I didn't get elected into my position because of the color of my skin or do any, any race baiting stuff that it seems like you're promoting here. And I ask you what you identify. <laughs> I love it. Never Justin X. <laughs> hey, hey, Justin, do you want to tell Vic what's going on tonight? Oh, yeah. Um, we were going to give him a chance to promote that as well. Yes, we, yes. If you like Justin and what he's about and what he has been talking about. Uh, if you're in the St. Louis area, you can go and enjoy something too. And if you're not, and if you're one of our national listeners, if you like what Justin hears, you can also, if you like what Justin's saying that you hear, you can also support him. So tell everybody about your event tonight. Yes, I have a top golf fundraiser tonight. Anybody here is welcome. It's going to be free food, free drinks, and free golf, and it should be a good time all together. And if you can't make it and you still want to donate to make sure that we're pr promoting conservative values here in the state of Missouri and continue to do that forward, you can always go to justinhicksformissouri.com and donate there. Justinhicksformissouri.com, justinhicksformissouri.com. How can people still get the tickets tonight at Top Golf? Are you still selling tickets? Uh, they, they can, all you have to do is show up at the door and we'll let them in. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay, so you have people the at the door. Yep. You make a donation, you show up at the door, and then what happens exactly? Do people play golf? Uh, they... Yeah, we'll have a portion where where I'll speak a little bit here, and then after that, we'll let everybody loose, let them go to the bays, let them play golf, let them have fun, eat, and enjoy their time. Okay, so it's $100 per person then, correct? It's a suggested donation. Okay. Yeah. And then that's a donation for you. Do they, do they pay separately to golf? No, or... nope. It's all included. Okay. Okay. Yep. And then I guess you pay for your own refreshments, correct? Uh, soft drinks and things like that are included. Okay. Uh, if you're, if you want alcohol that you have to pay for that there. All right, man, we appreciate it. That was, you were rocking and rolling today. my friend. <laughs> any, That's any good time. stuff. Uh, hey, pro Joe, can you pick up this, put the picture of the celebrity that I sent you that Justin is in? I just sent it to you. What's the celebrity? You'll see. It's really exciting. It's, <laughs> He's and, and you'll celebrity? get to see the celebrity. He's the celebrity, but there's somebody even way more important that's you get to see tonight if he. Oh, you mean if somebody who goes there? Well, I mean, if you go to the he, Justin might be related to this person. Oh, oh okay. Oh, okay. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you're also. There they are. There's my babies right oh. there. <laughs> so that's my daughter, Heather. Many of you were asking is why I just sent it to Pro Joe. That's my daughter who's married to Justin. And the celebrity is the love of my life. And her name is Liberty Grace. And she'll be there tonight because guess what? Grandma's going to bring her. <laughs> Who had final say of the name Liberty, by the way? Uh, it was actually both of our idea. We wanted to make sure that we were promoting things we believe in, and we thought Liberty would be a great name by by itself. Can we pop Liberty back up, Pro Joe? Can we pop Liberty? <laughs> can up. we pop her back up? How old is Liberty? Because Liberty, look, that is that Liberty picture is, is awesome. Ten months old. She's is she walking yet? She's crawling like crazy and everything. Every time you turn around, you got to go find her again. So. <laughs> yes, you do. You do. So true. So true. And my daughter, she, when she was younger, she, several times for Halloween, she was the Statue of Liberty. So when she met Justin, <laughs> I'm going to say one thing about Justin. The very first time, apparently, she went over to his apartment. She called me on the way home and she goes, Mom, either this guy is really my dude or he's a faker because you know what he had on his fireplace? And I said, what? She goes, a picture of the Constitution. <laughs> so that some people might not appreciate that, but my daughter was very impressed by that. Dude, that's, that's top notch, it. my friend. He lives it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And isn't your daughter an attorney too? She is. She yep. is. And she works for Andrew Bailey. She's the <laughs> prosecutor there. By the way, Andrew Bailey will be joining us next Wednesday morning. Andrew Bailey, the Missouri Attorney General, will be jumping in again. He loved the show the last time he came in as well. So you guys are working, and that's good to hear. Because yes. sometimes, despite despite what people say, we are working. We've done a lot. There's still more to be done. And I think next session is going to be the session to actually get some of the priorities that we have that we couldn't get through that finish line, like state control of, of police in the city of St. Louis. Because while we did get out the prosecutor there. There's still issues that are going on there. There's still things that need to be fixed and mm -hmm. you have to resolve crime before you can go tackle other areas like economic development and different things like that. So we'll be working on things like that. I know we'll be also, I have some bills that I'm looking at regarding this whole human trafficking, sex trafficking thing here, yeah. making sure we're tackling that issue as well. Because if you look at it, the United States as a whole, we're one of the biggest importers of this year. And I don't know what that says about us, but we definitely need to crack down and 
try to prevent a lot of these things from happening. So we'll be looking at that to also be looking to do some more tax cuts here for citizens here in the state of Missouri. Look forward to those things as well. We got one more question. Somebody wanted me to, they begged me to ask you this and they've asked me twice, once online, once in the text. Can you please set out 100% the realistic chances of property taxes ever being done away with in the state of Missouri from your short time working as a Missouri representative. And we know that you don't, you can't predict the future, but somebody's like, Justin tells it how it is. What yeah, is no, his opinion? Yeah, no, I'm happy to talk about that there. So I think the idea of getting personal property tax eliminated by itself is obviously is the goal is what we want to do. How realistic is that by itself? is what we're struggling with in the legislature because obviously there's a tax revenue that's generated by it and it goes to pay for things such as your fire your ambulance different road projects a whole array of things by itself your schools different things so we have to look at how do we supplement that kind of money but at the same time take away what's currently there there's been some suggestions there's an idea that i have that needs to be vetted through a little bit more. That's why I didn't file anything on personal property taxes this, this year because there was so many bills out there regarding it. I wanted to step back for a second and see what people were doing, what was going on, what's working, what's not working. There is a possibility of getting rid of it by itself. And I think it comes down to, and the misconception is that it's counties and different things like that are dealing with the personal property tax. Really, it's your municipality because the county is just set there to collect it but your rates, and that's why they're so different, come from your municipalities by themselves. So we have to figure out a way to make sure that we're not limiting what the municipalities can get, but at the same time, trying to make sure people are able to not have to deal with personal property tax, because we, we are a handful of states that, mm. and a lot of times you can offset it in sales tax or different things like that. So it's, it might be a shifting game, by itself. And it's unfortunate where it is, but to just eliminate it, what you're going to end up with is a deficit in one area by itself. And then we're going to have another issue with funding, whether that's your ambulance, your fire, your police, whatever out that way. And then that's what I think people don't realize when it comes down to it. There's been numerous bills out there regarding it. And most of them, not all of them, are terrible ideas because it's shifting around. I don't think it's going to happen yeah. in the state of Missouri. I, I don't know, see I, how. I, I think it's possible. It's possible. It's about the right aligning of things by itself. It's getting something that municipalities aren't going to push back against because I think that's probably one of the biggest heartaches by itself is the municipalities push back so hard on it. And you have certain individuals in the legislature that will take that run with it and we'll try to stop you at every at everything. I'm happy to be filing bills to say, hey, we're going to get rid of it and stuff like that. But I'm also realistic. Like I said, I'm realistic that it's a revenue source. You, we have to look at how we're funding other things here in the state, how that will happen. And it's a bigger puzzle piece than just filing a bill saying we're going to cut it. There's yep. a thing about it. And it's more complicated than that. So there is a realistic possibility of doing it. Is it going to happen this coming up session? I would say probably not just because what what moved this year during the personal property tax was were bills that dealt with capping based on the year of your car. And that conversation so far away from where we're trying to get at. The, con- the conversation we're trying to get is how do we just get rid of it all together? And there's a few bills that look at that, but then they have very perverse, adverse effects on the other side because of what it gets shifted to. Mm-hmm. So, I would say for citizens of the Missouri, hold in there. We are working on it. It is something that we hear you. We have we were trying to work through. It's more complicated than just the talking point of it itself. Well, Justin Hicks, Missouri representative. We'd love to see you burst onto the scene. You're doing so much and you're trying. We appreciate you being honest about so many things here too, yeah. being direct with answers and questions. And and we'll see you tonight at Top Golf. What time does it start? Starts at 6 p.m. and uh, goes till 9 p.m. All right, 6 to 9 p.m. And of course, how can people donate to your campaign as well or you, what you're doing? Yeah, they can just go to justinhicksformissouri.com and you can donate there. Or like I said, you can feel free to come to the event. $100 for golf and refreshments and you're supporting Justin at the same point in time. Sounds like a win to me, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, Justin Hicks, Missouri representative. We appreciate you taking time today, buddy. Thanks Anytime. so much. Thank you. Go enjoy your privilege. <laughs> 
Have a great day. <laughs> he's probably my favorite. Justin guest, Hicks. Just so you all know. Well, he better be your he's favorite. He's my favorite. Guest. That is awesome. And we've got an end with Justin. That's for yes, sure. Yes. And you know what I love about Justin? Besides the fact he is the reason I have, along with my daughter, my bald headed girlfriend, as everybody was saying on the chat line. Oh, I called, Liberty. Liberty, I called her my bald headed girlfriend, but is he is a very honest person. I can he, tell. He will not lie to you. And he doesn't speed. He doesn't do any of the crazy things <laughs> I do, but he's a good human being. He is, my daughter was saying this and Justin hey. doesn't even know this. Last night she was coming over and just talking about what a good human he is. When he says it, I believe it. And he won't even lie to you about the personal property tax. And some people are saying, oh, yes, it's going to be done. There, there's laws that have to happen. I love so. the fact that he came in and he was honest as yes. much as he was and yeah. breaking up things. Okay. Off the record. What is he like? What what is he what, like? yeah, what's he like? What's he, what's what he is like? he like? I'm going to tell you guys all something that you might think is really bizarre, but cute at the same time. He is a kid at heart too. So if... 